Hey, what's up everyone? Today I got my review of the iPhone 4S. To start off, I want to say it now comes in AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint. It is only running on 3G and HSPA Plus. So this is an AT&T version, and the HSPA Plus version is supposed to be a little faster on the network side than the current iPhone 4. But let's take a look at its specs. It's got dual antennas, one on each side. That switch back and forth for better signal. That way you help eliminate the left-handed antenna gate grip problem that you had on the iPhone 4. It's also got a A5 1.0 gigahertz dual core processor. This allows up to two times faster processing and up to seven times better graphics. This has great potential for new apps and new you know, games and things, but has not yet quite been implemented. It's also got a new 8 megapixel camera, which has two new lenses actually on the inside, or like in the camera, which helps get a wider angle and actually let more light into the camera, making it for a better picture. If you want to see a more direct comparison for the iPhone 4S pictures versus the 4 pictures, you can go ahead and click up here on the left, we'll say, the other third main feature that is included in this new iPhone is Siri. Siri lets you talk to it and you can ask it questions or ask it to do things on the phone and it will do its best to try to do what you ask of it. So some of the basic things you can ask it are, when you, cl you click on it and it's here, you can say things like, what's the weather like? Here's the weather for today through this Monday. You can also ask your questions. You can also tell it to do things like call Ryan. And it'll start Which to call. Ryan P. Ryan R. Or Ryan F. I have three Ryan, so it's. I don't know what it's called. So it's. No, don't do that. Um, so it's actually, you know, it looks through my phone. But that feature was actually in voice control on the old iPhone 4s and 3GSs and I think even 3Gs. But it can also handle some more advanced questions, such as, let's exit it so it and just kind of restart it. Can you set a reminder for when I get home to take out the trash? Here's your reminder for when you get home. Take out trash. So, Shall I create it? So it's actually got... It actually knows who I am. It knows my name. I think if I say what's my name, it'll tell me Alex. And it actually has, you know, has its built-in GPS. And under my contact info, I have my address. And so it has it set so when I get home, that it will have this reminder pop up, and it'll tell me to take out the trash. You can also have reminders set by time, and a few other um, cr criteria. But you can also say things like. Uh, What's the best pizza in Bethesda? And I found a number of pizza restaurants. Fifteen of them are in Bethesda. I've sorted them by rating. So it actually go ahead. It it it's, it goes Bethesda, and it finds all the pizza places, and it's got ratings. I believe these are Google based, and it just sorts them based on ratings. And you can you know click on them, and it'll give you the GPS coordinates, and you can look at all the ones plotted can click on it, call them, see their address, you know, the stuff the iPhone's capable of. You can ask it many more questions and do its best. And like if you, you can ask it other technical questions and it'll, it'll like search up on the web for you or give you graphs. Like if you say, what's 200 divided by 5? And it... Okay. And you know, it gives me all this kind of technical information. It's a pretty cool uh, feature, but it's not it's not insanely important or anything. Next up, I want to talk about technically there's a bigger battery in the actual iPhone. I don't I forget what the exact specs of the new battery are, but that does not actually translate to better battery life. I find on my four when I get home at the end of the day, I usually have about forty percent battery life. But now, on this 4S, I find I only have about 20%. The main thing I find is that the fact that it's at 20% when I get home 
means it's a lot harder to make it through the night without charging it. You know, if it's at 40%, I can turn it off overnight, like if I'm at a friend's house or something, wake up the next morning, and it'll still work. At 20%, you know, you can't really go the next day without charging it. Next, I want to talk about iOS 5. Some people are saying that they don't want to cover iOS 5 in their 4S dem um, reviews, but I feel like it's a key feature and that the iOS, you know, the operating system is such a key part of a phone, it has to be included in a review. So let's talk about some of the things. One of the first things many people are happy about is some of the new features with the camera. So when you're at the lock screen, so when you double click this, you get the old three buttons click. And I find, I don't know if this is new or not, it's new to me, is that like I had iHeartRadio up before and now I can actually hit play and it will continue playing iHeartRadio not just from my iPod. But the new thing, definitely, is this camera button. So you can actually click on it and it'll launch right into the camera app. Now the camera app itself also has some new features. So if we, oh that's not what I meant to hit. So when we're in the camera, we can actually do a few new things, like we can go into options and we can turn on grid. Why do I keep doing that? We can turn on grid, and it'll give us like a little, I don't know, there you go, you can see that grid, and you can turn that off, and then it's also got HDR, but the big features that people are happy about is you can now use the minus volume button to focus in on things, if it can find focus, it can't find focus right here, oh there, and then you can use the plus button to actually take a picture, so you no longer have to tap on the screen you can just click the plus button which I find very nice because it helps keep it steady and from you know the camera shaking around the next big thing I want to talk about is the fact that they've changed they've done a complete overhaul of the notifications so the first thing is like when you, you can go to settings now and go to notifications and it will have all your apps that have notifications and you can click on anything such as we'll do text messaging there we go and now you can turn you can turn off the notifications or turn them on you can have how many things are displayed so you can one item five items or ten items and then you can have what kind of alert so you can have no alert so it's not gonna do any sort of pop-up on the screen you can have the classic alerts which are that big thing that pop up in the center of the screen that say, you know, close or view. And now the new feature, which I find very nice, are banners. It pops up right here across the top of the screen, small enough that it's completely out of the way, but big enough it's readable. And you can click on it and it'll bring you, so if it's like a text message and I'm playing a game, I can click on it and it'll bring me to that game. You can also choose whether you're going to show a pre preview, whether it's going to repeat, or it's gonna, um, or it's just gonna do it like one time, and also whether you want to view it in a lock screen. So when it's locked here, it'll pop up across here. Pull down menu, so you can you just drag from the top. Oh, missed it. It's got the default weather and stock one, and for some reason, sometimes things seem to pop up in between them. This is my reminder. And as you saw, you can click on things, and it'll take you to them. And then when you come back, it'll be gone. So I might. These are some of the new emails I've gotten. Haven't gone through them. Need to go through them. But one of the new features I'm excited about is these widgets. I'm not sure, but hopefully app developers will be allowed to make their own widgets. So you'll be able to get your own weather bug widget or anything else, kind of like an Android operating system. And you'll be able to change widgets like whatever you want. So that'll be nice. All right, next up I want to talk about is that you can actually make custom vibrations. So for all those alerts and stuff, you can actually uh, have your own custom made vibrations. Go here, vibration alert. You can choose from the few default ones, but now you also get to create your own. So just by tapping on the screen will make it, you know, different different strengths and different you know different patterns, whatever you want. And then you can, you know, it'll, you can play. You can probably hear the vibrations. Obviously, you can't feel them. And then you can save it. I have one called da 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 da. And you can now set that to your text messages, or you can set that to certain people when they call you, 
or it's just like a custom ringtone and you can really do whatever you want with it. You can also have LED uh, flashes go off. So when you have an alert, the LED on the back will flash and it'll help you, you know, know that you have a notification. As far as apps go, there's a few new apps in iOS 5 that I want to talk about. I'll start off by talking about the new stand app, which is basically iBooks, but there's still many bugs for it, I find, and the magazine support isn't that many. Many of the magazines have very low ratings and even cost monthly subscriptions. Or I have found, for instance, that the New York Times keeps giving me notifications, even though in the notification center it is turned off. New York Times is the only one of those three magazines that have done it, and is a little frustrating. Next up I want to talk about the Twitter app. It's a built-in Twitter app. It's a little basic but there's no there's nothing wrong with it. I have found that it works fine. I but there are some reports of people saying that like it won't update. They've had to delete it and then reinstall it. But for me it's worked fine and I have no complaints about it. Next up is a little different. It's actually the cards app. Let's you I'll briefly open it but I actually sent myself a card. So you can come in here, choose from defaults, change the front pictures, and it actually is pretty nice. It lets you customize the text. You can go, you know, change that front picture, and then you can change what's written in here. But let's actually take a look. I actually have a, a card handy. <laughs> it's very fancy writing, and it came extremely fast. I do have a complaint that it was ripped here in the bottom. A little out of focus, sorry about that, but it's significantly ripped, which is a little unusual. Let's open this up and uh, see how the card looks. So I actually did put a picture on the front of it from my, that I used with the iPhone uh, 4S camera. We'll see how it looks. Looks surprisingly better than I would have guessed. It's actually a birthday card, forgot about that. Here's to another great year. I believe this that was just the default writing, that was not anything special. But this picture looks very nice, it's got some good texture, and this little thing is nice texture. And this was only $3, so for $3 it was pretty nice. In here is the nice text. I hope to get this before I get my review. And uh, I sent this on the 19th, and I got it the 24th which I guess is five days but that includes the weekend so it came faster than I would have guessed overall I was happy with my three dollar purchase next up I want to talk about an app that I briefly talked about before is the reminders app basically I like to think of it as the um, notes and the calendar kind of mixed together what it does is it lets you make you know little notes that will remind you of things reminders it's it's a pretty straightforward app it's pretty nice. I mean, it's nothing extremely insane that they couldn't have built into the f operating system last year or the year before or even a few years ago. And lastly, I just want to briefly mention that for anyone who's owned an iPhone before, you know your music and, vid and movies and stuff and music videos have all been under the iPod app, but now they have split it up. So now there is actually music and videos. This is the same way the iPod Touch works and it's a little nice because your music videos are separated from your music and so they don't get mixed in and you don't get you know if you're on shuffle you don't get those. Alright as far as my final thoughts go is it does open apps like the you know Safari or the Maps or the Calendar or any of the built-in apps slightly faster I don't want to get into any other apps too much, any third party apps, because they have not yet been optimized to work with this new operating system and the new A5 chip that's faster and everything else. It does open the pre-installed apps slightly faster than the 4. And if you want to see some more direct comparisons, you can click over here again against the 4. It'll be right here. The current shape and stuff, I mean, I'm a little disappointed. I was really hoping for an iPhone 5 with a bigger screen and less probably borders down here and maybe a slightly better facing fr or front facing camera, but we didn't get the redesign, so I was a, I was a little disappointed by that. And I mean, the screen is 
small, it's 3.7 inches or whatever, and a lot of new phones are, you know, 4.7 inches, like the screen is as big as this entire phone, but I don't, the screen is very high detail, and I don't feel like it's that small when I use this a lot. I use my Android phones, and I, I hold a lot of different phones, so I feel sometimes like this is a little small, but if you have this, and you're not like me and have a bunch of phones or something, I wouldn't be too concerned about the screen size unless you have really hard time seeing or something. So I'm sure many people are wondering, should I upgrade? What should I do? Is this good? Is this bad? Is it worth the money? Is it not? Well, basically, a lot of the new features are actually just in iOS 5, and you can get those in the 4. Yes, the 4 will not have Surrey, but I feel like Surrey is not essential to people. It's not, it's not a make it or break it thing. It's, it's just kind of there. It's kind of useful. I use it, but I find it kind of slow to use. Like, if I ask it, what's the weather? I find it faster just to click on weather bug and it loads up. Maybe you feel differently. So if you have a 3G or 3GS, I'd recommend upgrading. It's a fast phone. It's a solid phone. And it'll work for a two-year contract. But if you have a 4, I would not recommend it. I would definitely try to hold off till the iPhone 5, which will hopefully be a redesign and be just maybe some NFC technology or just have some new things in it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please comment down below with your own op opinions, thoughts, concerns, things I forgot to add in here. Let me get your guys' opinion. Maybe I'm just some crazy guy. And I'll uh, see you guys later.